I've been curious about Christopher Ward watches for years. I see photos of them and people I respect talk about them, but I never really spent more than a few minutes with a watch from the brand, so this is kind of exciting for me. There are a lot of similarly priced and similarly specced watches available these days. In such a competitive landscape, the questions I'm trying to answer are simply, is a Christopher Ward watch worthy of attention and worthy of the price? So let's get into it. This C60 Sapphire Orange is the first watch from Christopher Ward that I've worn. I've been borrowing it from the brand for a little over a week now, and so you know I've got some thoughts. Christopher Ward is a relatively young British watch company. It started in 2005 as the first online-only watch brand. Being a British watchmaker and being online-only, two things the brand had stacked against it, especially in 2005. But CW has survived and seems to be flourishing. When you look at the Christopher Ward catalog, you'll mostly find sports watches, both modern in design and vintage inspired. There are a few dressier pieces too, like the Moonglow that I'm a big fan of, but sports watches is its bread and butter, or beans and toast, or whatever the English eat. When I first heard about Christopher Ward watches, it was in the context of their seemingly incompatible price to quality ratio, especially for a smaller brand that didn't have the economies of scale. At the time, CW was selling Swiss-made watches with adjustable bracelets, sapphire crystals, and ceramic bezels for well under $1,000. I knew the brand as kind of a darling of the collector community. While their prices have gone up a little in the past few years, most Christopher Wards are still on the affordable side for Swiss-made mechanical watches. This C60 Sapphire lists for $950 on this hybrid rubber strap and $1070 on a bracelet. Now I know that $1,000 is an unattainable amount of money for most humans. That's the unfortunate truth. But in the world of watch collecting, where people literally have more money than they know what to do with, a $1,000 timepiece is considered almost affordable. I hope that never stops sounding weird to me. The case of the C60 Sapphire is 40 millimeters in diameter, 13 millimeters thick, and 47.5 millimeters long. It takes 20 millimeter straps, weighs 108 grams in this configuration, and has an unnecessary water resistance rating of 600 meters. I think that's Christopher Ward trying to prove its technical chops, but ain't nobody diving deep with this thing. The C60 has a 120 click unidirectional timing bezel. Behind the weirdly dark tinted case back is a Solita SW200. It has 38 hours of power reserve and beats at 4 Hz. I want to thank Christopher Ward for saying directly that this is a Solita, and not giving it a branded name like the Caliber CW420 just because they put a design on the rotor. It's an SW200, it's a good movement, everyone can acknowledge what it is. And it is worth noting that a few years ago, Christopher Ward started producing its own in-house movement, the SH-21. But as you might expect, the SH-21 is only in some of their more expensive watches. And I don't think we're going to be seeing that movement in the C60 anytime, ever. On my 7 inch wrist, the C60 Sapphire is ideal. I wear watches of all shapes and sizes, from 36mm to 55mm. But I do think that 40 millimeters is the perfect size for a traditional dive watch, and that's mostly what this is. I'd like to try the watch on a bracelet sometime just for the look of it, but for comfort, I don't think steel could top this strap. It has a black Cordura top and is lined with orange rubber that's covered in grooves for breathability. It also has quick release spring bars. Honestly, this strap is way better than nearly any I've seen on a watch in this price range. Seiko, where you at? Maybe you already figured out why this watch is called the C60 Sapphire. The dial is made of orange tinted synthetic sapphire. This treatment isn't for durability or legibility, in fact it probably makes reading the time a little harder. The sapphire dial is just cuz. It's strange, it's unusual, it's fun. My favorite part of this transparent dial is watching the date wheel rotate when I set it. Totally dumb, and you know what, there's nothing wrong with that. After all, you're thinking about spending a thousand dollars on something you don't need, so don't get all judgy. Christopher Ward makes the C60 Sapphire in this orange, blue, and black. Going out the photos, I think I prefer the black. At 12 o'clock is a lightly etched brand logo, 
At 6 o'clock is the word automatic and the water resistance rating. And at 9 o'clock is the CW word mark, which does a fair job of balancing the date window. It's a thoughtful layout. And a lot of this watch is detailed and thoughtful. Actually, this case and bezel are unusually well considered and well executed for this price. The lugs in the case flanks have large polished bevels running along them, ending at angle cut lug tips. The crown knurling is crisp without being sharp and it's etched on its top. The steel bezel is loaded with minute details and all of them are done at a really high level. It was only when I started looking closely that I realized how well built this watch is. But is it good enough? If you've got a grand and you're looking for a sports watch, you've got a lot of options. More than I can talk about here. But here are a few water resistant watches that I would consider alongside the C60 Sapphire. The Longines Hydro Conquest for around $1000, the Doxa Sub 200 for a similar price, the Archimede Outdoor, the Squale 1521, Yema Superman Heritage, Zodiac Super Seawolf 53, the Marathon G-SAR for a little more money, $1200 to $1500, and a few Seikos. A bunch of few Seikos. So when I look at the competition, I think the C60 Sapphire stands up really favorably. It's well designed, it's well built, it uses a trusty movement that you often find in watches two or three times the price of this one. It's got a borderline comical water resistance. I think if you like the look, you can feel really good about buying this watch. I for one am ambivalent about the style. I asked Christopher Ward to send me this one because a transparent dial isn't naturally something I gravitate towards but I wanted to see how I felt about it. I learned that I'm not into it. But please hear me when I say that I'm not claiming that it's bad in any objective way, it's just not for me. Everything else about this watch though, I really like. Christopher Ward was early to the online watch game and as a result, I think they've learned a lot about marketing, about the market, and about making watches. And while I won't be buying this watch, I'm genuinely excited to check out more watches from the brand. So stay tuned. Or don't, I'm not the boss of you.